Good day, folks. It's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. I'm going to walk you through a little performance exercise using Wireshark. We're going to talk a little bit about your NIC and something called offloading. And there's an offload setting in some adapters. I want to show that to you. But there's no better way to do this than to illustrate it with an example. So, quick little review. I've got on this laptop a docking station. And I've got my Ethernet adapter on my laptop. I disabled my Ethernet adapter, so I'm forcing myself to go through the actual docking station. I'm telling you right now, you should disable whatever you're not using. And I'm even going to do that with my Wi Fi. I'm going to disable my Wi Fi. All right. Because I've shown in some other videos when my laptop, and about yours, my laptop will choose to send stuff through the other interfaces even though the LAN one is working fine. So I don't want to deal with it. So that's why I turned all that stuff off. So again, quick review. My docking station is the only one up and running now. That's the only one I'm going to get to the server. My server is this 1044.10.92. I've mapped a drive called T for temporary. And I'm going to copy a 1 meg file there. You don't need to copy a lot. On Ethernet, uh, the typical frame size will max out with your Wireshark trace. You'll see 1514 bytes. It's actually 1518, but that's fine. Well, 1514, I'm not going to get into that right now. And that's what we should see in the trace, the largest packet 1514 for local traffic. If you decide to go through a VPN or through a VLAN or whatever and the MTU gets changed, that's a whole other discussion we're not going to have today. And that's it. So there's my filter, host, space, and the IP address of the actual server. And there's my adapter. Click, click. And there you go. So now I'm going to go to my command prompt. I'm going to copy this 1 meg file to T. Slash capital Y means just do it and don't ask, don't prompt me if I want to copy the file there. That's it, done. So I'm going to stop my capture. I'm going to sort by length. And I'm just going to hit the home button to go to the top. And you can see 1514 is the maximum packet size. Awesome, right? Life is good. So let's do this again. I'm going to go to my capture options. I'm going to go to my Ethernet adapter this time. That's what I'm going to capture from. Same filter, same filter. But I need to enable it. So let me go back over here. I'm going to disable my docking station. I'm going to enable my Ethernet adapter. Okay. So just give it a moment. Identifying on some switches, if you have something called port fast enabled or not enabled, this will affect how long this thing takes to get on the network. I just realized this port does not have port fast enabled, which is fine. It just means it's going to take 30 seconds or so for it to kick in, right? And then the connectivity will actually say that I have network access. And I'm looking at the port. The port is orange still. So just give it a moment. It, it'll, it'll get there. And, and that's it. So we're going to come back over here. We can start our capture regardless. Right. Now it's internet access. We're good to go. I'm going to drag back my command prompt. I'm going to pull up my last command. Boom. Done. Drag it back. I'm going to hit stop and sort by length, go to the top, and you can see, look, 62,000 bytes. See that? So why, why? Well, if I look at my ethernet adapter and I go to my properties and I go to configure my adapter, let me just drag it back in here, there's an advanced tab. And you can see it says right here, a large send offload IPv4, see that? Now, you've got both, version two and the regular one, and then IPv6. This is what we're talking about, and it's enabled. So what's happening is SMB is taking all this data and shoving it down the stack uh, and saying, you know what, let the card deal with this offloading and segmentation and CRCs and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to offload that processing. I don't want to deal with it. The problem is Wireshark sees that big gob of data before it's chopped up, and that's what Wireshark is presenting to you on the screen. So if I was to come over here and say, I want to disable offloading. Okay, I'm going to hit OK in a moment. Now, just a little warning. My system last week, I did this exact exercise for a customer. I had Wireshark still on. I had a whole bunch of stuff going on, and it nuked my driver, and I had to reinstall the driver. So what I'm going to do now is just pause the video for a moment. I'm going to shut down Wireshark. I'm going to apply my changes because now I'm all paranoid, <laughs> and, and we'll redo the exercise. So I'm just going to pause the video. All right, I'm back. Of course, nothing broke. Awesome. I'm happy. 
and I've just restarted Wireshark. And again, my docking station's disabled, so I don't see it on the list. It's a little tip for people. See this VMware adapter? If you don't want to see it, just right click on it, hide interface, it's gone, right? There you go. So there's my Ethernet adapter. There's my capture filter, same as before. I'm just going to double click here. The capture is running. Uh, just a little orientation. I didn't cover this before, but just so you know, it says you're capturing from the adapter name. I called mine Killer. And there's the actual filter that it's using, the capture filter. So I'm going to drag my command prompt back over. I'm going to hit the up arrow key, enter. I'm going to do this. I'm going to stop my capture. I'm going to sort by length. Hit the home button. And see that? 1514. So why am I doing this? Well, if you're capturing packets on Wireshark and you have that offloading enabled, your traces are going to look weird because you're going to see this big gob of data leave, which is not true. There's a bunch of little tiny segments or smaller segments. And then when it gets to the other end, it gets acknowledged, right? You get acknowledgement packets back. And that's going to really mess you up because you're going to see one big packet go out and a whole bunch of acknowledgements coming back. And even Wireshark is going to say, what's all this about? So this way, when you do this, you have the true number of packets leaving and the acknowledgements will line up. As far as performance goes, for most people surfing the net, checking their email, copying files, most users, this is not really going to mess this up, mess them up and affect their performance at all, I would say. Uh, when you're all done with this, sure, you can put it back. It's not a problem. But just a little something for you to know when you deal with offloading and your Wireshark traces. The other way of getting around this is don't capture from the machine sending the data. Be the third person in the conversation with a a hub, a mirror, a tap port, a tap, uh, that kind of thing. And then that way the packets are all segmented and chopped up, hit the wire, and then you see it. All right, folks, there you go. Have a good day. Bye for now.